Tony I'm completely Burke, supportive why of the, the Fair Fed. Work Commission needs to actually, you know, enforce this, or whether you need Parliament to enforce rules like the right to, to disconnect. So we just had Dai Lee on the program. Um, you know, she sounded pretty exasperated. This doesn't relate to any of her uh, constituents. That's the way she put it to me. OK, OK, look, I, I think we've gone to two completely different issues, Laura. The, the first issue is on the concept of working from home. Yeah. Uh, and on that one, I'm not proposing legislation and I've described no. the circumstances where potentially there can be but barriers be potentially a within an award. And, oh, and as I say, at the moment, the final decision on that's not made, but at the, at the moment, the discussions with the department that I've had have been whether there are barriers that would get in the way of work from home yeah. where it's viewed as being in a common interest. But, but it They're sounds like you would make a submission right to in disconnect. support of right the to... Fair Work Commission. Well, it, all submissions are submissions to the Fair Work Commission where if there's information That's the right. government can provide that we think is helpful, we, we provide it. Mm. Right to disconnect is something different, though. Right to disconnect is something where there are examples of employers getting way over the top with this and in okay. getting way over the top with Can you please give me an example? Because no one has given a good one so far. Oh, OK. You um, have somebody who works for a bank who is expected to constantly be responding to any of the customers that they might have, uh, e even outside of their work hours, when those particular inquiries could easily wait until somebody was back on the Monday. OK, well, is somebody someone who demanding, works at a law firm is in a modest level area. And, and, and sorry, can I, that, that's right, that's the concept. There's nothing wrong that's the with concept, emails but being sent to somebody. No, that's but right, you don't have to answer them. I think about political staffers as well, Minister Burke, and a lot of this is, is very hypocritical. Uh, we know that political staff, as anyone works in Parliament House, they're answering emails from early in the morning to late at night. So, are you, you know, are you practising this in, in your office? Is ever, every government office doing the same thing? OK, Laura, you've just used a big word in terms of the allegation that you've made on that, so let me explain. Every, every member of political staff has a choice as to whether they paid an allowance in lieu of extra overtime or not. I've got some people on my staff who are not paid that allowance. They are never expected to monitor outside of hours. If you are paid an allowance to monitor outside of hours, then of course that is part of your work. But the whole concept of disconnecting, yeah. you were saying, I, I think there was, a, um, with respect, a misunderstanding as to the final amendment that went through. Because the final amendment that went through was not forbidding employers on reaching out. It was about if a worker who is not paid an allowance decides that they are not going to respond mm. until they're back within paid time, can they be punished for that? And the law now says they can't be punished for that. This principle actually says nothing more then in Australia, you are meant to be paid when you're working. If you're already paid an allowance, there is nothing hypocritical about that because you are paid to be working. But if you are not paid an allowance, if you're someone on a modest income who is just paid to work between nine and three, mm. and you, you're expected to be constantly on your phone working way outside those hours, there is a word for times in history where people have been expected to work without payment. Now, that should not be something that happens in Australia. Yeah. And when there's a little bit of give and take, no one complains about that. But there are workers like the ones that I started to describe before, where they are employed under and paid under very strict hours and then are expected to work outside of those without an additional allowance. Yeah. In Australia, when you're working, you should be paid. What else have you got planned in this space? Look, the, the big issue that we've been wanting to advance for a long time was to get wages moving again in Australia. That's been a, a fundamental thing that became one of the, became one of the key issues in, in the election campaign. Okay. To make sure that we're delivering productivity, we need to remember this is not only 
about workers, productivity is also something about your supply lines. It's yeah. also something about dealing with issues like, like I've referred to recently, and the Treasurer referred to again yesterday, about non-compete clauses, about making sure that people can go to the more productive job when it's available, working through all of those concepts. But I, the thing that I think people are rightly sick of hearing is an argument that the key to productivity is somehow to hold back wages. The key to productivity somehow is to pay people less. Like a nation like Australia should be able to have a better answer to productivity than to say it's always going to be the workers fault. We had a decade where wages virtually flatlined in Australia and now after the legal changes that have been highly contested, finally yesterday we started to see annual figures where wages are getting in front of inflation yeah. again. It's been too long where people have been held back. And at the moment that started to happen, some of the business community were saying, oh, no, need to be careful now because wages, inflation might become the workers' fault. For heaven's sake, workers getting blamed for productivity, workers getting blamed for inflation. <laughs> the buck can't always be blamed at people on modest incomes who are just trying to make ends meet. No, but business employ people, right? They're the ones. Yeah, that, they do. They're the ones yeah, that they do. that create wages, and it is a privilege to have a job. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, my, I'm the employment minister. I want every Australian who wants <laughs> yeah. a job to have a job. Uh, I want them. To, I want them to. I want them to value their job. Uh, but also, I I don't see I don't see workers in, as being in some sort of landlord surf relationship. Mm. Uh, I do believe workers have rights. You've tipped the balance though since you've been minister. Was that your intention? Yeah, we have. Oh, I wanted, to, I wanted to correct the balance. Like, when wages flatline for 10 years, it's pretty yeah. hard to argue no, that the balance is right. No, but you've made this an employee's market. When wages start to get in front of inflation... Do you, I mean, when, what's when the wages concern, start then, to get in front businesses, of... you, need, you know, you, you tip the balance, you said that was your intention to do, but, I mean, yeah. the businesses down the track then get too nervous to employ people? Oh, businesses need to employ people... People need to have jobs. Okay. Like there's a natural relationship here, <laughs> but the fact that wages flatlined for nearly a decade okay. wasn't by accident. The previous government had low wage growth, as as you know, you're in on the interview. Oh, let's uh, go. Where I, Matthias we, sent no, an interview come to on. you. That's right. You've used that time and time again. I'm not sure it's correct, but look, Tony Burke, I'm getting in a lot of trouble here because well, I haven't can, had. Can you I on just the... say, Laura? Yes, Laura, quickly. Whether you say it's correct in the interview or not, it is what happened. For 10 years, wages did flatline, and with the change of the laws that we've made, yeah. wages are now moving again. OK, we will talk again, and let's make it sooner rather than later so we don't have to Fantastic. go for, for 12, 14 minutes. We'll speak soon. Thanks so much.